नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू इंडियन डिप्लोमेसी शो ऑन इंडिया नेशनल टेलीविजन चैनल दूरदर्शन अबाउट इंडियन फॉरन पॉलिसी इंडिया इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन इंडिया मेजर स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप एंड हाउ इंडिया इज इन्वॉल्व इन मेकिंग द वर्ल्ड अ बेटर प्लेस व्यूअर्स इन दिस एपिसोड इट्स अ स्पेशल एपिसोड वी आर लुकिंग एट इंडिया रिलेशनशिप विद वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंट्री इन द इंडो पैसेफिक फेलो डेवलपिंग कंट्री अ डेमोक्रेसी एंड अ कंट्री विथ हूम India is advancing cooperation quite rapidly this is the philippines and to discuss india philippines relations and uh, the broader regional outlook uh, in the indo pacific i have a very 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 distinguished guest with me in the studio let me introduce you to him none other than the secretary of foreign affairs of the republic of the philippines mr enrique manalo hello good afternoon Mr Manalo is uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs which is the equivalent to External Affairs Minister what we call in India and uh, he is a key member of the cabinet of President uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr and a long time diplomat who has served the Philippines with distinction he was their permanent representative to the United Nations uh, ambassador to the United Kingdom and to many other countries uh, excellency it's a great honor to have you here sir great honor to be here and thank you very much for inviting me uh Secretary Manalo Philippines and India go back a long way uh, it's a traditional uh, friendly relationship with hardly any conflict of interest and the kind of convergence that we are seeing now both at the strategic level at the socio economic and developmental levels it seems like the relationship is poised to go to a higher level you've just met our external affairs minister dr s jay shankar and have discussed at length uh, many sectors in which we are going to advance the cooperation so please tell our audiences what is it that brings philippines and india so close and what is it that uh, you are looking forward to in terms of advancing the relationship in particular sectors and areas well i think the basic uh, or fundamental reason that the india and the philippines have such a good relationship and are poised for even a better relationship is our commitment to some very basic ideals mm -hmm. that is the commitment to democracy democratic values good governance and and the importance of ensuring that uh, we are committed to uplifting the well-being of our peoples so these are the basic uh, frameworks guiding our cooperation and in fact uh, this morning uh, i have just come back from a, a a very productive meeting with the external affairs minister and uh, we have already identified uh, quite a number of areas of cooperation uh, which already exist but uh, which can be further enhanced and strengthened and these include the air areas uh, such as defense cooperation economic cooperation cultural cooperation uh, people to people cooperation uh, cooperation not only at the bilateral uh, level but uh, at the uh, multilateral level such as in the united nations where philippines and india have traditionally been uh, strong advocates of a strong united nations mm -hmm. and also at regional issues especially in our own indo pacific so there have been quite a quite a broad range of areas where we intend to pr further enhance our cooperation uh, under the framework of our commitment to uh, democratic values and democracy and good governance absolutely now excellency the um, you've written in the hindustan times a major newspaper in india about the fact that india and the philippines are uh, you know they have the shared uh, heritage of being developing countries you know legacy of coming out of colonial rule and their uh, south south cooperation you have been a proponent for that and on that level india has been uh, involved in uh, healthcare uh, in the philippines uh, supporting agricultural uh, development uh, clean energy uh, food security you have mentioned cyber security there are a lot of areas which have emerged now which actually is a classic case of south south cooperation so how much are you getting from india and and what are we getting from the philippines in the process and how do you see this uh, developing country developmental partnership going forward sir well we have uh, also uh, as you mentioned a very strong uh, developmental partnership which dates back to uh, our commitment to uh, uh, promoting south south cooperation especially in our participation in uh, grouping such as the non aligned movement and the group of 77 where for years ever since uh, uh we gained independence uh we have been cooperating with each other especially uh, in terms of our efforts to promote self determination and also decolonization and stemming from there our cooperation has grown to uh, areas as you mentioned in the development field uh and in fact today we discussed also uh, areas such as health cooperation 
uh, environmental cooperation, especially dealing with the adverse effects of climate change, mm. uh, and also uh, uh, areas such as uh, tourism and people-to-people mm. and -people contacts and education. And so uh, really quite a number of areas which are very much related to our overall South-South cooperation in building uh, greater resilience among the countries of the South. Um, Excellency, you mentioned also the defense cooperation. Now, many in India were thrilled to hear that the Philippines was the first country to uh, order the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile that's made in India. And uh, that is seen by many as uh, security experts as a, you know, a game changer for the region because uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has uh, set a target and a goal for India to become a major exporter of uh, weaponry uh, to fellow developing countries. Now, on that front, uh, we believe that it will enhance your uh, deterrence capabilities and uh, support your national security goals. So, um, apart and apart from the BrahMos missile, there are lots of joint naval exercises that we are doing now, India and the Philippines, and also in the context of India-ASEAN. Uh, this uh, 2023, we have had a joint exercise between mm -hmm. India and all the 10 ASEAN countries, including the Philippine Navy. And uh, that was a big success. And uh, our presence uh, in the West Philippine Sea and the South China Sea has also been welcomed by many players there, uh, ASEAN members, including your country. So uh, please tell us uh, what India is doing and what more we can do to support uh, your uh, security goals in the region. Because I've read uh, President Marcos Jr. saying that uh, the region in which the Philippines is located is the most complicated uh, yeah, geopolitical situation in the world today with all the tensions and the rivalries. So how can India come in? In the Indian Ocean region, sir, we call ourselves a net security provider. But beyond IOR, uh, into the Pacific, into the West Pacific, where you are located, uh, it is still a work in progress. So what more can India do together with you and with ASEAN as a whole to strengthen your security and uh, your uh, shared prosperity? Well, I think India as a partner can do quite a lot, given uh, India's uh, reputation and its actual, it's actually being a, a defense partner and also uh, being a leader in defense in our region. Uh, we see so many opportunities, not only in terms of providing weapons or defense, uh, enhancing our defense capability, but through, um, let's say, exercises, and not only through military exercises, but also through exchanges of information, best practices, uh, etc., and. Uh, learning to work together. I think uh, this is also an important part of uh, defense cooperation. And uh, we believe India has, uh, has much to offer, as you, as you have mentioned, uh, not only for the Philippines, but for the ASEAN region as a whole. And uh, this is really aimed at promoting our own, for example, in the case of the Philippines, our own national uh, security, our, own, uh, our ability to promote our security. And uh, in this respect, uh, we think that um, defense cooperation would be a very important uh, aspect of this. So as I said, there, this can range from weapons to actual exercises, as you mentioned, the ASEAN-India uh, exercise, and uh, also through exchange of uh, military uh, students, for example, and uh, you know, training, academies. training academies, and uh, also through uh, exchange of best practices. I think this is a, a sustained and ongoing type of cooperation defense, given the complexities, the geopolitical complexities uh, of our region, uh, the Indo-Pacific, and especially of our more immediate region, for example, on the South China Sea, etc. So uh, I think uh, the situation and the conditions are, are really there uh, to uh, promote uh, greater uh, defense cooperation. Uh, Excellency, you have talked about maritime domain awareness mm -hmm. as an important area, intelligence sharing, these sorts of things. And uh, we've been following uh, closely how the Philippines has also uh, significantly enhanced uh, its security ties with the traditional ally, the U.S., and also with Japan and Australia. Uh, there was talk in India about a new quad, uh, because the original quad was India, Australia, Japan, and the U.S., but then there was uh, Philippines, Australia, Japan, the U.S., the defense ministers meeting together, and there was this talk about um, how the U.S. allies, because India is not a formal ally of the U.S., as you know, but the rest of them, including the Philippines, are coming together to, uh, you know, uh, enhance interoperability and for deterrence. So uh, in, on, on that front, you seem to be more proactive in the Marcos Jr. administration than before 
uh, to uh, protect your core interests and to be uh, more assertive about your national security. So is that something uh, you have been in the foreign service of the Philippines since 1979, I've read. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have seen so many administrations and worked under them. But uh, this president, uh, President Marcos Jr., seems to have been much clearer uh, in his vision about what needs to be done to secure your country. And your thoughts on that, sir, and where does India come in? Well, I think uh, the President Marcos uh, Jr.'s vision is essentially to promote the national security, enhance the national security of the Philippines, whether it be through, through defense or through economic security, economic resilience. Those have been the, the, uh, the primary uh, priorities, for example, in his administration. And this is being done mainly through an independent foreign policy, which he has espoused. And uh, we are, what we are simply doing is seeking partnerships in our region to, to enhance and promote our national security, whether, as again, whether it be through defense or economic. And what better, uh, who better to turn to than our partners such as Japan, uh, Australia, and of course India, our, our traditional partners in many ways. And I think this has also been partly influenced by the changing complexity, the geopolitical complexity of our region, which, which brings more to the fore the, the need really to to uh, partner with more countries in order to, uh, to uh, ensure that you're able to uh, promote your own uh, capabilities, defensive capabilities, as well as economic security. So this is really uh, a reaction to the changing geopolitical circumstance. And I'd also have to say that not only through the man-made geopolitical circumstances, but even through environmental reasons, with climate change really uh, a reality nowadays, and all the effects of, uh, that it's causing, the adverse effects, also forces nations to, uh, to cooperate more with each other. And uh, this is uh, where I also think India, being uh, certainly a very important country in our region, uh, has much to offer. And uh, that is why we're also reaching out to India, and I hope my visit here uh, will help identify those many areas where we can uh, enhance our cooperation in the light of uh, the existing situation. Absolutely. So we are adjusting to the changing uh, circumstances and adapting to them, and that's why you see this assertiveness. Uh, Excellency, um, Philippines is a core member of the ASEAN, and uh, over time we have seen the ASEAN has been trying to uh, unify its position on various issues, and the Philippines has been a major force, a major player in ASEAN unity. And um, on these matters, India's approach, Act East uh, policy, as you know, is based on ASEAN centrality. We call it our Indo-Pacific policy as a whole has ASEAN in the middle, and uh, there, uh, President Marcos Jr.'s administration, your government, you have been uh, at the forefront of uh, bringing ASEAN unity to the to the fore. So here, uh, how do you see, uh, given this complicated ge uh, geopolitical situation where there is a so-called bipolar, you know, confrontation between China and the U.S., um, ASEAN is there in the middle and probably being wooed by both sides. And the same goes with the Philippines. So um, how are you doing this difficult balancing act? A lot of countries in the region say that they don't want to choose one side or the other. They can, you know, they want to uh, eat the American cake and have the Chinese pie, something like that. So um, how, how have you been doing this? And uh, where do you see um, players like India also supplementing your efforts, your search for, you know, security and survival in this, uh, you know, uh, divided region? Well, first let me uh, frame my reply by saying that uh, uh, in the words of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., uh, the Philippine uh, uh, independent foreign policy is based on the premise that we are friends to all. And it's on that basis that we reach out to all our, to all our partners and uh, friends. Now, uh, in terms of uh, the role of ASEAN, I think uh, the Philippines and all the ASEAN countries are very much committed to ASEAN centrality which we believe uh, really should be a major, is a major feature of the regional uh, security architecture. And it's something that should be strengthened because ASEAN consists of, the, of 10 middle power countries mm. uh, who lie right in the heart of the Indo-Pacific region. So even by, by geography alone, we have an important role to play in ensuring that our region uh, follows the, the ASEAN uh, objectives, that is to promote a region a peace, stability, and development for our peoples. And that is the, the basic guiding light of, of ASEAN. And we certainly uh, welcome the support of uh, 
a number of countries in our region for ASEAN centrality, and India has also uh, supported and has uh, voiced its strong support for ASEAN centrality, uh, where ASEAN could serve as the kind of meeting place mm -hmm. for all the countries in the region, including the major powers, because we believe uh, uh, the Indo-Pacific region and, us and our region should not be dominated by, by a single power. We should have a, uh, a multipolar region, and I think ASEAN centrality serves as a kind of uh, uh, focal point to ensure, at least promote, that kind of uh, approach to our region, because it's only through peace and development that we can really ensure the, the well-being of our peoples, which is the ultimate aim of any government. Absolutely. Now, Excellency, uh, President Marcos Jr. has clarified that you know, enhanced American uh, more bases in the Philippines and presence and all this is mainly for defensive purposes and not to you know, target any country. Uh, but as you know, China has major objections to this and they have uh, you know, uh, cried foul about the Philippines-US enhanced defense cooperation agreement. Uh, there are also questions about India-Philippines defense cooperation and whether that may be seen as, you know, uh, in somehow threatening Chinese security or their goals in the region. So, um, as a relatively smaller power that has been facing pressure and violation of your uh, exclusive economic zone and all these things, how do you propose to uh, stand firm and what can a partner like India, I mean, already uh, we have talked about many things we are doing together, but going into the future in terms of the presence in the region, in terms of joint, uh, you know, uh, operability, interoperability, and also deeper economic linkages, infrastructure, this is one area, uh, I believe you are also talking mm -hmm. with India about infrastructure yes. enhancement mm -hmm. in both our countries uh, with a special focus on Indo-Pacific region. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in this context, what more can we do uh, to make the region more secure, you know, and this is, I think, the challenge of our times. It's a big challenge of our times. There are no easy answers, but you are the, you know, uh, esteemed minister for the Philippines, so I'm asking you. Well, we have to find the answers. And, and the best way, uh, well, well, first let me begin by, by saying on, the, uh, on our enhanced defense cooperation with the, with the United States, that's really part of our existing visiting forces agreement. So it's really nothing that new. Uh, and that the additional sites which were uh, uh, in the news recently are, are exactly that. They're sites. They're not granting the United States any um, basis or creating new bases. And that the use of the sites is governed by uh, agreement, mutual agreement, by both the Philippines and the United States uh, in accordance with the, the agreement that we have. So uh, we, we have always said that this is really part and parcel of our existing arrangements with the United States and are purely aimed at promoting uh, Philippine uh, uh, defense capabilities. But more important actually is to provide a basis to, to deal with non-traditional security threats such as humanitarian, providing humanitarian mm. assistance and disaster relief. So it's really aimed to promote our economic and uh, national security and not aimed at any country in the region or any group of countries. So it's purely on the basis of our national uh, needs. Uh, we've always tried to make that point and therefore should not be viewed in the prism of any kind of uh, geopolitical rivalry or, or something aimed at another country. And that's why uh, uh, it, it's consistent with our efforts, for example, to reach out to India mm. to enhance our defense. It's purely to improve our defense uh, cooperation with India. It's a purely bilateral arrangement. And uh, we s both stand to benefit it in many ways, both our countries. And uh, since we see India as a major player in our region, who else should we not deal with but, but uh, try and tap uh, India's expertise, knowledge, and, uh, and uh, resources to see how they can also help us and uh, also to uh, find ways where India can benefit from that cooperation. Excellency, you mentioned that India and the Philippines, we have a shared international outlook. Uh, preference for multilateral solutions and for uh, negotiated settlement for disputes and all that. Now, um, given the crisis scenarios that are going around, uh, and these are not hypothetical, they are real. I mean, Taiwan is so close to Luzon Island in the Philippines. Um, the likelihood of, you know, a Chinese invasion of Taiwan or a large-scale war uh, involving U.S. alliance system and, and the Chinese in that region is uh, you know not just a you know uh, theoretical exercise. Many people uh, are predicting it to happen. So in that kind of situation, 
um, how would a relatively smaller country like the Philippines wants to avoid war, wants multilateralism, wants diplomacy, wants negotiation, what is what can we and you and India and like-minded other countries in the developing world do to prevent this worst case scenario from happening? And what do you think, uh, you know, apart from joint bilaterally, how can we bring in more players? Should we create a forum uh, for peace involving all our countries which share similar outlooks? And what, can we do a big diplomatic initiative? I mean, um, the Ukraine war has already shown that if there is no prior diplomatic preparation, there wasn't much in Europe and now they are facing a very, very dire situation. Could we, uh, you know, do some uh, pre-planning to uh, avert the worst case scenarios in the region? Well, I think I could probably answer that first by saying uh, the reason why India and the Philippines, for example, have very common approaches to situations of uh, international peace and security is first our commitment to the purposes and principles of the United Nations. And uh, I think amongst those important principles, are the, uh, the uh, commitment or the, uh, the need to uh, prevent disputes from becoming open military conflicts. In other words, uh, to try and seek the peaceful settlement of disputes. And there are many ways of doing this. And also to promote the adherence to, uh, to international law and rules-based law. In other words, uh, it's only through these, um, these uh, approaches, that is through international law and rules-based law, that we can really uh, try to promote, uh, let's say, development prosperity. So I think uh, these, these uh, principles need to be uh, really um, uh, put forth to all countries to see that, uh, to, uh, to make all realize that this is the only the best, this is the best way to ensure that our multilateral system uh, functions. And uh, it's this commitment to the rule of law, which uh, I think India and the Philippines share. And it's, it's an idea which, uh, we uh, should try and, uh, let's say, gather countries to promote the importance, especially now, of the rule of law and, uh, and the need for the peaceful settlement and resolution of disputes. So normative, you know, uh, spreading the values of uh, rule-abiding, you know, conduct in international relations very much, sir. Um, last, uh, I want to bring you to the issue of our bilateral ties uh, compared to India-Vietnam, compared to India-Indonesia compared to India, Singapore, uh, the Philippines in terms of trade levels, in terms of people to people uh, is not up there yet. And we would like the Philippines, especially because it's a fellow democracy, you know, and in ASEAN region, you are one of the few democracies in that region. So uh, we would want to expand this relationship in a big way. We have a shared English language uh, heritage as well due to colonial reasons. So uh, what more can we do to make this, you know, to bring this to a higher level so that, you know, in five years time, we say that within ASEAN, Philippines is in the top three partners of India, you know, uh, in, in all respects, including trade and people to people and of course security. Well, in fact, that was the uh, nature of our talks this morning. And I, I think that, uh, as I said, what's really essential is that we, we uh, of course, we agree that uh, we have our common, uh, uh, adherence to democracy and, uh, and democratic values, okay? And of course, the English languages so you said, I mean, these are the basic parameters, but the real, the real challenge is how we can now, using this, promote our, or enhance our cooperation in these various areas. And I, I'm very optimistic after today's talks that uh, we are now more than ever convinced because of the general situation, et cetera, the need to, to really see how we can promote cooperation. And in fact, we identified many areas, for example, in the area, the economic area, areas such as agriculture, mm. uh, trade, infrastructure. Uh, I think there are lots of opportunities here, also in terms of health and uh, tourism and education and uh, general people-to-people -people contacts. Uh, we uh, have to really identify specific uh, kinds of activities under this and the fact that uh, we have many now uh, mechanisms which can discuss this and uh, actually identify and agree on initiatives, both from government to government and from private to private uh, sectors. And uh, I think this is the, the way that we are proceeding. And uh, I think uh, what really came out today is really a, a strong commitment uh, for India and the Philippines to really see how we can uh, reach our potential uh, you know, as soon as we can. And uh, I think we are determined to do that. And uh, 
there's such a broad range of areas that we can do it. So we have lots of uh, areas to pick and, and uh, opportunities to take advantage of. So uh, you was uh, the foreign minister of the Philippines, uh, for Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines is saying that uh, we have much in common, but a long way to go. And uh, there are many interests, uh, shared interests that we are pursuing from uh, economic development to security and people to people and cultural ties, uh, tourism. Philippines is a beautiful country uh, and uh, we would very much hope that uh, Indians go as much uh, to the Philippines as they go to Thailand, for example. And uh, we would uh, look to see uh, the BrahMos being just the first step towards much greater enhanced security cooperation and many other areas. And uh, I, think, uh, I think the Philippines, in a way, uh, was an undiscovered gem uh, for our Act East policy. And now, finally, we seem to be attaining that. I want to thank uh, Excellency um, Mr. Manalo for sparing valuable time for coming to thank India you. and for being such a champion for our bilateral relationships. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be able to speak today on your program. So, viewers, uh, Philippines matters. Philippines is a very important country. Uh, it's a rising power, uh, it's an emerging power, and uh, India also as an emerging power uh, will need to uh, hold hands and uh, take this relationship to the next level so that uh, both of us enjoy the fruits of uh, shared uh, prosperity and security. Thank you so much. Let's keep an eye on the Philippines uh, as we look at the broader Act East policy. I'll see you again next time. Until then, take care.